In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to do UV unwrapping for beginners. So this tutorial is geared for beginners, so I will go very slowly and show you all the basic steps and the process of how to do UV unwrapping in Blender. So if you're more of a beginner to Blender or 3D modeling, then you may be wondering why we even need to do UV unwrapping. So let's say that I have a 3D object and I want to take a 2D image and I want to put that image on the 3D object. So what UV unwrapping does is it tells the texture how it's going to be placed on the object. And so kind of what it's doing is it's creating a 2D version of the object because you are taking all of the faces on the object and you are flattening them out. And then that way you can place the 2D texture onto the flat version of the 3D model. And so where the UV mapping is on the texture, that's where the texture is actually going to be displayed on the object. And then of course you can edit the UV mapping, so you can scale the UV mapping to change the size of the texture, and you can move the UV mapping around to change where the texture is placed, and you can rotate the UV mapping around the texture. Real quick before you continue, if you'd like to help support me and this channel to help me keep creating Blender tutorials and content, then I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. Those are all great ways to help support me and this channel. And if you enjoy this tutorial and you'd like to give me a little tip, you can also send a super thanks underneath this video here on YouTube. I do appreciate your support. All right, so let me give you a real example here in Blender. So I'm just gonna take this cube here and I'm going to apply a texture onto it. So what I'm gonna do is click right over here to the shading tab. So now that we're in the shading workspace, I have the 3D view right here, and then I also have the shader editor right over here. So to actually add a texture onto the object, we need to add a new material, and then we need to add in the texture into the material. So with this cube selected, I'm gonna click on new here to create a new material. And then then I want to add in a texture here. So in the shader editor, I'm gonna press Shift A, and let's go here to the search, and I'm gonna search for an image texture, and I'm just gonna drop the image texture right here. And then I can click on the open button to open up an image texture. And then I am going to be downloading this rough wood texture, and this is a free texture from a website called polyhaven.com. So I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download the same texture that I'm using, or you can just use some other texture that you have have, or really any image file. So I'm just going to click on the diffuse. This is the color one just because I want to preview the color and then I'm going to click on open image. Of course, if you set up an entire material with a color map and a roughness map and a normal map, then this will work fine as well. I'm just going to use the color though for this example. And I do also have a tutorial specifically on how to set up texture maps in Blender. If you'd like to check out that tutorial, I will have the links in the description. So we've now added this color map here, the wood color map and I want to put this onto the material. So what I can do is I can pull out a wire here from the color and then I'm going to stick this into the base color of the principled shader. Now you can't actually see the texture on the object and that is because we are in the solid view. So to preview the texture on the object we either need to go into the material preview or the rendered view. So what you can do in the 3D space is you can hold down the Z button and then you can move your mouse up to go into the rendered view and then it's actually going to render it and it's going to show you a rendered version or you could just go into the material preview that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna hold down the Z button and then move my mouse to the material preview and let go and then this way it's just going to have a real-time preview of the material so we can now preview this wood image on the cube now we actually haven't done any UV unwrapping yet. All we've done is we've stuck the color to the shader. And this is because the default primitive objects in Blender already are UV unwrapped on default. So let me just make this a little bit smaller, make this a little bit smaller so we have more space here. So if I press Shift A or go right here to the Add menu, I can go to Mesh and then here are all the default primitive objects in Blender. And I could add any of these objects. So I'm gonna add a cylinder and then I can press G to grab. Let's hit X to bring it over on the X axis, stick it there. I'm also going to press Shift A, and I could also like add a monkey here. So this is the Suzanne head, the mascot of Blender. I'm gonna press G to grab and bring this over on the X axis. So all of these primitive objects in Blender already have a UV map applied to them. So I can click here on this object, and then over here on the materials, I can click on the dropdown, and I can add the same material. And you can see again, 
and we're able to see the texture on the object because it already has been UV mapped. And then I can also click right here on the Suzanne head here, and then I can click right here and add the material just so that we can preview the wood object. So these objects already have a UV map, but when you are editing an object, it's going to kind of mess up the UV editing. And also you might want to change the UV editing. For instance, right here, you can see that there are some seams and things, and some of the wood is going at different angles. You can see the wood is a little bit stretched here. So you might want to change the default UV editing. You might want to re-UV unwrap the object. And also in many cases, you're going to do more complex modeling to the objects. And so that is going to mess up the UV editing. So after you've done all the modeling for the object and the model is finished then you can do the UV editing so just to show you if I select the cube and press the tab key that's going to go into edit mode and let's say I want to add some loop cuts here so I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut and then I can scroll my mouse wheel out so there are two loop cuts and then I can left click and then right click just to place them there now that didn't really change the UV editing at all but if I press S to scale this and I scale that out now you can see the UV editing is getting messed up so you can see there's some weird stretching there and there's that little sharp area there. So this is why you have to re-UV unwrap an object after you model it. You usually aren't going to be able to use the default unwrap of the objects. Now to preview the UV editing, we can just click right over here to the UV editing layout. So right over here in the UV editing layout, right over here we have the UV editor. So this is the window that we can edit the UVs. And then right over here we have the 3D space. And you can see that the UV editor has automatically added in the texture so we can see it in the background of our UV editing. Now if for some reason it hasn't added the texture in the background then you can scroll over here and you can click on the drop down and then you can add in any texture that you want to see in the background. But because we added in the image texture right here, Blender detected that this was the image that was on the material so it already added it right over here on the UV editing tab, it added it here in the background. Now right over here in the 3D space you do want to make sure that you are in edit mode. In object mode you can't edit the UV editing, so it is important that you press the tab key to go into edit mode. Now, if I press the A key a few times to select everything, we have now selected all of the vertices and the faces, so we've selected the entire mesh. So then right over here in the UV editing, you can actually see what it looks like. And if I press the A key to select everything, this way you can see it better. So this 3D mesh right over here is represented by the UV editing right here. And if I click right here to go to the face select, I can select different faces. And when I select the different faces in the 3D view, it's going to show me where that is on the UV editing. And also we are back in the solid view. So I'm just going to hold down the Z button and go into the material preview. And that way we can actually see the wood text. So we can use the UV editing to edit how the texture is placed on the objects. So if I move the UV editing, that is going to move around the texture. So I'm going to press the A key to select the entire mesh. And then if I move my mouse into the UV editor, I can press G to grab, and it's going to move that around. And so as it moves around the UV editing, that is going to change where the texture is placed. Because if I like click on this face right here, that is the face in the very center. So then if I press G to grab, I can move this around on the texture. For instance, maybe I want this texture here to show that little knot right there in the wood. I could press G to grab, bring this over and stick it there. And then right over here on the side, you can actually see the knot of wood. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. If I press the A key to select everything, I can also press S to scale and I can scale this. So maybe I want to scale this way down and maybe it's a smaller object. I could scale this way down and now the texture is much smaller. Or I could scale it up if I want to see much more of the wood. And I can also rotate it as well. So maybe I don't want the grains of wood to be going back and forth. I want them to be going side to side. I could press R to rotate here in the UV editor and I could just eyeball it or I could type in a specific value so I could type in 9 and 0 and then hit enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. So now you can see the grains of wood are going back and forth on the x-axis instead of the y-axis. And you can also just select a vertex like for instance I could select this vertex right here and then I could press G to grab and I could move this around but most of the time you're probably not going to do this because as you can see if I like bring this out, it's going to stretch that texture and that looks really bad. So for most things, you're probably just going to move the entire face around. So I could just click right up here in the UV editor and I could change this to the face select and then I could select these faces and I could press G to grab. And if I navigate down here, if I press G to grab, that is going to move that face down there.
All right, now this texture is still really stretched and there's some problems here, so we need to re-UV unwrap this texture because this UV map isn't actually that good. Because we modeled it and changed things, it's kind of messed up, so we need to create a new UV unwrap. So how you do this is make sure you're in edit mode and then you're going to press the A key to select everything. Or if you just want to UV unwrap a certain area, you can just select the faces that you want to UV unwrap. In this case, I want to UV unwrap all of the object. So I'm going to press the A key a few times to make sure everything is selected. So now what you're going to do is you're going to hit the U button and the U button is going to bring up the UV map settings. And there are a bunch of different settings here. I'm just going to go over the main ones that you're probably going to use most of the time. So there's there's this first one here, this is just unwrap, and this is just the default unwrap. And so if I click on this, it's just going to unwrap the object. And you can kind of think of this setting as being like a manual unwrap, so it's just going to manually UV unwrap the object. Now if I click on the unwrap button, you can see right down here there is an error. And it says the unwrap failed, and it says edge seams may need to be added. So basically Blender is telling us that it doesn't know how to UV unwrap this because it doesn't know how to cut out the mesh. Because as I talked about earlier, we basically are taking this 3D mesh and we are flattening it out so that it is kind of like a 2D version of the mesh. You can see this right here, this is 2D, this doesn't have any 3D area, we can't navigate around in 3D. This is just flat 2D and there is a 2D texture here. So what we need to do is add seams and the seams are going to tell Blender how we want the mesh to be cut out. And I will show you how to add seams later in this video. For now though, I do just want to UV unwrap an area. So I'm just going to select this face and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this face. So we now have just two of these faces selected. And we have that weird stretching there, so I want to re-UV unwrap this. So with those two faces selected, I'm going to press the U button again, and then I can just click on unwrap. And now you can see that it's unwrapped it, and you can see that the texture goes from this plane right down here to this plane, because we UV unwrap these together, and there wasn't any seam in between them. And also, if I press the tab key to go back to object mode, you can see there isn't any stretching, and that looks very nice. So this square right up here, that is represented right here, and then right over here, this little area which kind of folds down, that is this part right here. So then as I talked about before, I could press S to scale it, R to rotate it, or G to grab it. Just like if you were to scale or rotate or grab something in the 3D space, you can scale or grab or rotate the UV editing. All right, so that is the first UV unwrap setting. So I'm going to press the U button again, and I'm gonna go down here to this one, and this is the Smart UV Project. And so with the Smart UV Project, you don't actually need to add seams, and Blender's just going to guess, and it's gonna do the best job that it can to UV unwrap the object. So I'm going to click on the Smart UV Project, and then there are a few settings here. These settings you probably aren't going to use most of the time, so I'm just going to click on the OK button. And so this is the Smart UV Project. And so you can see that Blender has automatically decided where it's going to cut out the mesh, and it's done the best job that it can to UV unwrap the object. And what's really awesome about the Smart UV Project is that there isn't st any stretching of the texture. If I look around here, I really can't see any stretching. It all looks pretty good. And over here on the UV Edit, Editing, it's also done the best job that it can to optimize the size of the UV editing. So it's scaled up the UV editing and it's tried to make it the biggest size that it can and it has covered most of the texture. There still is this little part right here that it's not using but it has done the best job that it can. And so the Smart UV Project works really well for very blocky objects or objects that don't need the texture to seamlessly go from one face to another face. Because for instance right here you can see that the wood texture texture doesn't seamlessly go from one face to another face, because if I select this face right here in the UV editing, the face is down here, but then this face is right up here. So the faces are not next to each other on the UV mapping, and so because of that, the texture isn't going to seamlessly go from this face to the other face. And so that is where adding seams comes into play. So if you have specific areas that you want the texture to evenly go from one face to another face, then you wouldn't want to add a seam there, you would want to add a seam to other other areas, preferably other areas which you aren't going to see on the 3D mesh. All right, so let's go to the next one. So I'm going to press the A key to select everything, and then I'm going to press the U button, and the next
next one that I want to show you is the project from view and also the project from view bounds. So let's first click on project from view. So this is going to do exactly what the name suggests. It's going to UV unwrap the object from our view. So how we are actually looking at the object. So if I just kind of move over here to the side, then press U and do the project from view, you can see it's just going to flatten the entire object from our view. And so you can almost see the shape of the 3D object right there. So what I'm going to do is press three on the numpad to go to side view and zoom in here. And I'm going to press U again, and then I'm going to click on project from view. So this is going to make this very flat. So if I look here on the side, let me just kind of bring this object over so it's out of the way. If you look here on the side, we UV unwrapped it from this view. And so all the faces right here look very flat. But because we unwrapped this from the side view, if you go right up here to the top, you can see that this face is all stretched. If I select this face and zoom in here to the UV editing, you can see that the face has been squished down. And that is because we UV unwrapped it from our view. So we UV unwrapped it right here on the side. So that face is just very squashed. And so it's basically only using one pixel. If I zoom way in here, it's just using one color pixel. And so that one color pixel is going to be stretched along that entire face. And then if we go right over here to the back, this is going to have the same texture as the texture right here. Like you can see right up here, there's these two little dots here on the wood texture and they're also right there and that is because they are sharing the same space if I select this face and then shift and select this face you can see they're actually overlapping because they are sharing the same space because we unwrapped it from our view so the project from view setting can be very useful if you have more flat objects or you just have like a giant area that you want to flatten but for 3d objects like this it doesn't work too well now there is another variation of the project from view so if I hit the U button again, this one says project from view bounds. And what this is going to do is going to do the same thing, but it is going to scale up the UV mapping and make it as big as it can without going out of the bounds of the actual image texture. So if I zoom way in here and I press U and then just do the normal project from view right here on the UV editing, you can actually see that the UV editing goes out of the bounds of the image, or I could scale way out and make this really small and then press U again and do the project from view and you can see now the UV editing is really small. So again what the project from view bounds does is it does the same thing it just projects it from our view but it scales the UV mapping and it makes it as big as it can without going out of the bounds of the texture. All right so now that we've covered those things let's actually do a good UV unwrap to a cube object. So I'm going to press the tab key to go back to object mode. I can just press X and let's just delete this object. And then I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go right here and just add a new cube. And then I want to add the same material. So I'm going to click right here to the material properties. And then I'm going to click right here and let's just add the material. So I can now just preview the wood material on the object. And then I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode. And just to change how the UV mapping is, I'm going to press U and then I'm just going to do the project from view. All right, so now the UV editing is all messed up and we want to fix it. So we're going to need to add seams to tell Blender how we want to cut out the mesh and then Blender can make the UV editing flat and it can flatten it down on the texture. So if I just press U and then just click right here on the default unwrap, you can see it's going to give us that error there. So now let's add some seams. So to add seams, I'm going to click right over here to go to the edge select because I just want to select the edges. So what I want to do is I want to open up the the flat face right here, kind of like if this were like a treasure chest or something, and I wanted to open up the top of it. So to do this, I'm going to select this edge, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this edge, and then hold down the shift key and select this edge. All right, so now all of those edges are selected. So to add seams, I'm going to press U, and then I'm going to go right down here and click on mark seam. And if for some reason you want to clear the seams, you can just select the seams and press U again, and then you can click on clear seams. So I'm going to press U and then I want to click on mark seam. Now if I press the A key to deselect it, you can see that those edges have turned red. And so that is just telling us where the seams are. But if you actually tab to go back to object mode, you can see those red lines aren't actually going to be there in the render. They're just going to show us in edit mode where the seams are. So tab back into edit mode and I'm going to press the A key to select everything. So I'm now going to press the U button again and now we can choose unwrap. 
All right, so now you can see it hasn't given us that error message and you can see it has done a bit of a better job. So there is a lot of stretching right here. There is also some stretching right here. This texture is really big, but right up here, you can see that actually looks really good. So it basically cut out the mesh right here and it opened up that face. So if I press the A key to select everything, you can see right here, this is the face that we cut out. And then there's still some weird stuff going on right over here. There's some weird stretching and things, but that looks pretty good. So the next thing that I want to do is go here to the back kind of where the hinge is and I want to add seams here so that we can open this up as well so make sure you are in the edge select and then I'm just going to select this edge and then hold down the shift key and select this edge so I can now press U again, and then I'm going to click on Mark Seam. So we've now cut those edges and they're going all the way down there. So I can now press the A key a few times to select everything. And then I can press the U button. And then again, I'm going to click on the unwrap, just the default manual unwrap. So if I click right here to go to the face select, I can select this face. So here's the first face. Then I can hold down the shift key and select this one. And so because we've added seams there, it's cut out those faces. And so those faces are nice and flat and there isn't any stretching. Now, if I press the tab key to go back to object mode, something else to notice is that the texture actually goes down the faces. And that is because we didn't add a seam right here. And so these two faces are actually connecting. They're actually connecting to each other. And so this wood texture, the grain of wood goes along the top and then it goes down. Whereas right over here, if you were to look at the front of it, you can see that doesn't really match up. The grain of wood doesn't match up. And that is because if I tab into edit mode, we added a seam right there. All right, so we still have some stretching and some weird things going on like right here. And you can see these faces are very deformed. So what I need to do now is add a seam down here and add a seam down here. And then that way we'll be able to fully open up the box. So again, let's click right here to go to the edge select. And then I'm going to just select this edge and then hold down the shift key and select select this edge. So I can now press U again, and let's click on mark seam. So we've added seams there. So now what's going to happen is this face right here on this side and this face right here on that side, they're going to be open down. But then right here, you can see there isn't a seam there. So the texture will connect with those faces. So press the A key to select everything. And I'm going to press U and then I can click on unwrap. So there we go. Now, if I press the A key to select everything here, you can kind of see what that's looking like. And the UV editing is nice and flat. And if I look around here, there isn't any stretching. Everything looks good. And another way to tell that there isn't any stretching is to check to make sure that each face is actually retaining the shape. And these faces are all square objects. And right here on the UV editing, they're all squares. So that looks really good. So I could scale the UV editing. I could also rotate it and I can also move it around. So that is it. That is the basics of UV unwrapping a simple cube. So for practice, I want to also UV unwrap a cylinder. So I'm going to select the cylinder and I'm going to press the period on the numpad to zoom over to it. So if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see it's already done a pretty good job. And this is the default UV unwrap and it does look pretty good, but we are going to change the UV editing and then we are going to add seams and re UV unwrap this. So I'm going to press the U button and just to mess this up, I'm going to do the project from view. And so now the UV editing is quite messed up. There's all this weird stretching here. So now let's add seams to this object and then we will UV unwrap it. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode. And then I want to go right here again to the edge select. So what I first want to do is add seams all around the top here. And that way we can cut out this top face. So what I'm going to do is hold down the alt key and then I'm going to select right here. And that is going to select the entire loop of edges. You could also do this with the vertex select. So you can go to the vertex select, press the A key to deselect, and then you can hold down the alt key and then select that loop right there. So we have now selected the top loop there and you can see that in the UV editing it is kind of stretched. Now what I could do is I could just UV unwrap this by itself without adding any seams. So I could press U and then I'm going to just click on unwrap. And now you can see it's done a pretty good job and it's scaled it up and there isn't any stretching. But I do want to add seams here because I want to UV unwrap the entire thing at once. So what I'm going to do is press U and then I'm going to go right down here and click on mark seam. So now that top face can be cut out. Now let's do the same thing for the bottom. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that loop right there. Then I can press U again to unwrap and I'm just going to click on mark seam. So now there is a seam on the bottom and the top. So let's try unwrapping this now. So I'm going to press the A key to select everything and then I can just press U and then I can click on unwrap. 
Now you can see up here on the top it did a pretty good job, and then right down here on the bottom it did a pretty good job as well. But right here on the side you can see it's all stretching, there's all these weird glitches and problems, and this is because it doesn't actually know where to cut it out. So we need to pick an area where we want to add a seam, and we need to add a seam from the top to bottom, and then that way the circular tube can kind of open up and be flat. And generally speaking, you don't want to really be able to see the seams unless there is a specific spot where you actually want the texture to not be connected. So if I press one on the numpad, that is going to go to front view. And so let's just say this is where we are going to render the object from. So because we are going to see the object from this side most of the time, I could add a seam on the back of it. So I'm going to go to the back here, and then I can click right here to go to the edge select. I can now just select this edge here, and I can press U, and then I can just click on Mark Seam. So now that we've added a seam there, this entire loop of faces going all the way around can open up flat and be put flat on the wood texture. So I'm going to press the A key to select everything, and then I can press U, and I'm going to click on the Unwrap. So there we go. Now those two circles there are flat, and then also the faces going all the way around are flat as well, and so that looks really good. Now if I navigate to the back here and zoom in, I can tab into edit mode, and you can see this is where we've added the seam. Now if I zoom in here and look really closely, you can't actually see the seam. And this is because this texture has been made to be tileable. So I downloaded this texture from polyhaven.com, and so the creators of this texture has actually made the pixels so that the starting right up here and the ending can actually loop. So it's a seamless texture. And just to show you, if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, I can press the A key to select everything. And in the UV editor, I can scale this way up and I'm going to scale it really, really big. So now I've brought this over and you can see it's very big. But if I zoom in here, you can see that all of the wood texture is seamless. And most textures that are created for 3D work are tileable. So I'm just going to press control Z, control Control Z to undo this just to bring it back to its default size. So normally you would see a seam there, but in this case, because the top connects to the bottom, we can actually get away with that and we don't actually need to see a seam there. But if I were to scale this down a little bit and bring it over, maybe bring it down there in the, the center. Now if I press the tab key to go back to object mode, you can clearly see a seam there. So the wood texture doesn't evenly go between this face to this face. Um, so sometimes you are just going to have to deal with seams, but in this case, Case, we are going to be mainly looking at the object from the front on, and so it is hard to see the seam. Now something else that I wanted to show you is how to rip the faces. So let's say that I just have a couple faces in here, I could actually select them. Let's say I want to move them out and kind of move them over here. Well if I just select them and press G to grab, you can see I can move it over, but you can see it's actually stretching those other faces. And so this looks fine right here, the ones we have selected looks fine, but then on each side there is some stretching. And so instead of doing it like this, we can actually rip the faces and we can create a different UV island. And just so that you're aware, UV islands are each of these little areas which are all connected to each other. So if I press the A key to deselect everything, I can press the L key with my mouse hovered over the vertices, and that is going to select the linked vertices. And so this right here is a single island, and then this right here, this is a single island as well, and then this right here, this is all a single island. So let's get back back to ripping the faces. So there are a couple ways to do this, so let me just go right here to the face select again, and then I can select these two faces. So if you just select these two faces in the 3D view, it's only going to display those faces in the UV editor. So I can now press G to grab, and I could bring this over, and now you can see that it's not going to stretch the other faces. So that is one way to do it. I'm going to press Control Z though to undo that. I can press the A key to select everything, and then let's just select these ones here, let's say I want to bring these over. So normally if I just try to bring them over, it's going to stretch those faces, but what I can do is I can actually rip the faces and separate them. So if I press the V key, the V key is going to rip the faces. So I can now bring these out and you can see they are now separated. So now we actually have five UV islands. We have one, two, three, four, five UV islands. So what I'm doing is I'm just hovering my mouse over the islands and I'm pressing the L key. That is going to select all the linked vertices by pressing the L key. So you can see we actually have five islands now. And so ripping the faces can be very useful if you have a specific area that you want to move to a different location on the texture.
And then before we finish this tutorial, there is one more common problem that might happen to you that I wanted to let you know about. So what I'm going to do is just press Control Z to undo this. I'm going to bring that back there. All right, so now the UV island is connected. So if I press the Tab key to go back to object mode, let's say I'm just editing this object and I want to scale it. So I'm going to hit S to scale and I'm going to scale this up on the Z axis. So I've scaled this up and I've scaled this object up in object mode. So now that I've scaled the object up, you can see there's some stretching. So I'm like, okay, I want to re UV unwrap this to fix the stretching problem. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to select everything and I'm going to press U and then I'm just going to click on unwrap. And you can see that something isn't working properly. Even if I mess this up by doing the project from view, just kind of change the UV editing. Let's try this again, U and then click on unwrap. You can see if I tab to go back to object mode, the texture is still stretching. Now I could could try to fix this by going over here into the UV editor. I could press the L key with my mouse hovered over the UV editing, and I could try to scale it up sideways like this to try to fix it, but that would just be eyeballing it and it would be stretching out the UV editing and kind of messing it up, and so this isn't the proper way to fix this. So why this is happening is because I scaled the object up in object mode, and so to fix this I need to apply the object scale, because this is what I want to be the new default object scale. So in object mode, I'm going to press Control A, and that is going to bring up the apply settings, and I'm going to click on scale. So now that we have applied the scale, this is now the new object's default scale. So I can press the tab key to go back to edit mode. I can select everything, and I can press the U button, and then I can click on unwrap. And now that's going to fix it. So now it's stretched that out properly, and I could like scale this if I wanted to, scale it up. And now you can see there isn't any stretching of that wood texture. So if you're ever having some weird problems with the texture being stretched, it might be because you need to apply the object scale in object mode. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. So that is the basics of UV unwrapping in Blender. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope it helped you to understand the basics of UV unwrapping. And I do have a couple other tutorials that I wanted to let you know about. So if you'd like to learn how to properly set up texture maps in Blender, then I do have a specific tutorial on how to set up texture maps in Blender. Link is in the description if you'd like to check that out. And I've also created another tutorial showing you a really cool, easy texturing method that you can use to apply textures to your mesh without actually using UV editing. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial, again, I'll have the link in the description. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, I will have links to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships in the video description. And I do really appreciate your support. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.